In today's video, I'm going to show you all I achieved over half term. Half term is when the kids are off school, for those of you who don't know, and it's been pretty hectic. But I managed to reclaim control over my messy bedroom, got myself out in the garden to do some cleaning and prepping for summer, finally achieved my get back on top of the house mission, and in this video I also discussed some of the downsides of putting yourself out there on social media. As always, these vertical form videos are TikTok compilations, so if you've already seen some of them, I do apologise. But these are put together for people who don't have that app, and there will be another horizontal, long-form video coming soon. As I said, it's been a busy week, so please bear with me, and let's get into it. In today's video, we're taking back control of this room. I have been on a mission to get back on top of my house, and we're going room to room, and getting it done bit by bit. This room's the worst in the house by far, it always is because I usually spend all of my energy trying to keep on top of the rest of the house for everybody else. And then, as you can see, my room just becomes a dumping ground. Now, I've been making cleaning videos for over a year now, so I can already predict some of the comments I'm going to get. A common one is always, how do you let it get this bad? Or, I would never allow my house to get like this. And my response to that is, that's really great for you. Honestly, I'm really happy for you. But we're not all the same and some of us really struggle with keeping on top of things. I've always been the same and generally, I do really well with it now. I've got a good handle on things. But sometimes, I slip up and it gets on top of me, like you see here. But when that does happen, I always work my arse off to get back on track. And that's all you can do, isn't it? Just pick yourself back up and try again. No point in hating yourself for it. If I badmouth myself every time I let go of the reins a bit, I'd be a literal shell of myself and I'd never get out of bed. I'd much rather stay positive, tackle it, and make a video at the same time to help other people. That way, at least all these messes have a purpose and my time's well spent. And over the years, I've developed this handy talent of being able to clean up a huge mess really fast. So that always helps. So yeah, after cleaning the floor, the bulk of the mess was just clean clothes that I'd brought in and didn't put away. This is a regular occurrence in my house because I either get called away because someone needs my help, I get distracted, or my battery for the task runs out. Funny that it always seems to happen with laundry though. It's just soul-crushingly boring and I'll never get on board with it. But we're doing it now, that's the main thing. And the room is already looking so much better. Anyway, we have a real problem with clothes in this house. We are absolutely overrun. Even after doing multiple declutters this year, it's like the clothes just sprout out of nowhere. And even if I did, by some miracle, manage to get on top of the washing pile of doom, I'd just have nowhere to put it all. So it's just this constant cycle of overflowing washing baskets and piles of clean clothes. Sick of it. I know some people in the minimalist world say you only need like five items of each thing. So five tops, five bottoms and so on. And I think I could get on board with only having five pairs of trousers, but my style is so dependent on my mood, she says on a 30 second consecutive day in pyjamas. Slug will always be my forever mood. But I just don't know who I'm going to wake up as and what I'm going to want to wear. So limiting myself that much stresses me out. When it comes to the kids, they don't actually have that many clothes now, it's just Rudy has so many superhero outfits, but to be fair to him, he wears every single one of them. And Charlie's problem isn't clothes, it's shoes. He has so many. I literally have one pair of smelly old trainers, one pair of work shoes, and one pair of going out shoes. But I know the only option with the clothes is getting my act together and making some more hard choices. At this point though, it's just going to be me getting rid of things I genuinely love purely for want of more space. And I'd say one day we'll have a bigger place, but that's sounding more and more delusional as we move further into this cost of living crisis. Love that for us. By us, I mean all of us collectively, and if you don't laugh, you'll cry. But hey, we've got no one else to blame but ourselves, or those iced coffees we've been drinking and cinema visits. Obviously joking. Anyway, moving on to getting this floor cleaned. You probably noticed there's bronzer all over the floor and the wall in the corner, courtesy of Ike. Thank you very much. Got into my makeup bag, didn't he, and decided to do some art. Doesn't matter though, because I've got the carpet vac, and watching that get cleaned is the most satisfying thing. I could clean carpets all day. I wish that was my job. I find it so soothing. Did anyone see the TikTok of some professional carpet cleaners who'd gone round someone's house, and their carpet was like filthy, filthy? 
and they managed to pull up all the dirt and get it looking brand new and honestly looking at it you wouldn't have thought that was possible and then later on the people they'd done it for messaged them asking for a refund because they didn't think they'd done a very good job as you can tell i get very invested in tiktok drama but the cheek of some people honestly they literally transformed a carpet that had gone dark gray back to cream Anyway, in the next few weeks or so, I want to start making some videos showing you how I prevent my house getting into these kind of states. As a messy person, I have to work so hard to counteract my own nature. But I found something that really works well for me most of the time. And it might help some of you, so I wanted to show you that soon. I know I did my spin the wheel cleaning series, but this one's a bit different to that. The spin the wheel cleaning's more for if your house is already messy and you need some novelty and fun to get you motivated. This one's more of an everyday routine that still keeps it fun, but stops things from becoming overwhelming. So yeah, that's coming up. I don't know when though, because it's half term here now and all routine's about to fly out of the window. It's day one as I do this voiceover and there's already been scraps over a scooter. Ike's been laid on the floor in Asda, refusing to get up because I wouldn't let him lie on the scales. And Rudy's bored because I said this week's for quality time, not screen time, so... <laughs> Help. It's all right, we've got a day at Conker's planned and a day at my mum's, so should be okay. We'll get through it. I know I joke, but I do actually love having them both home with me. It's the best thing. Anyway, look at how much this room's transformed. Ignore the top of Charlie's wardrobe, that's not part of it. I can't reach it, none of my business. But yeah, now it's back to being calm and cosy and lovely. And all that's left to do, of course, is light a candle to seal it. See you next time. Today we're sorting this garden out. As you can see, the wind's emptied pretty much the entire contents of the recycling all over the lawn. And I'm going to be honest, I have left the mess out here for a shameful amount of time. Because I've been avoiding this garden like the plague. But we're sorting it now, because like I said in the last video, I am on a mission to get back on top of the house. And that includes the garden. That way we're on the right track for a lovely stress-free spring and summer. Because I want to do Easter egg hunts and barbecues and all that lovely stuff. I'm just separating the recycling here because I stuffed them all into bags to take out and sort and then never get round to it. Until the night before the recycling van comes that is, but I want to stop doing that. There are some things this year that I would just love not to be a mad rush or panic. But yeah, ever since we got leather jacket grubs and all of the plants and grass died, I just find the garden depressing. But I am determined it's going to be a hospitable place for the kids to play this summer. And, on a positive note, we've started out this year with a lot more grass than we did last year, thanks to all the nematodes. If you ever get leather jackets on your lawn, by the way, nematodes is the only way to go. Leather jackets eat the root of the grass, by the way, for people who don't know what they are. They are an absolute menace. And my lawn in particular is just a haven for them, and new builds in general, because the grass tends to get really waterlogged. So yeah, I'm going to strim it today, because of course it's too wet to mow. And then I'm going to throw a ton of grass seed down and hopefully in a few months we'll have some lush grass and I can carry on my garden renovations. You're probably wondering why there are loads of microfibre cloths scattered all over the garden. I remember I'd taken them with me to do a house clean and by the time I was done they were all absolutely disgusting. But when I got back the washing machine was full and I was in one of those moods where the house has to be absolutely spotless or I can't settle. Rare for me I know. And I didn't want them in the house, so I was like, right, I'll just put them in a bag and put them outside next to the back door. And then I can whack them in the washing machine later. Did I? Of course not. So now, not only do they have grease and grime all over them, they've got loads of slug and worm juice on them too. I ended up just throwing them in the bin. I'm really sad though, because they were loads of my favourite colours. If you don't watch my YouTube, you won't know that I collect them, and I like to have every colour under the rainbow. It's the little things, isn't it, that just brighten your day. And a bright pink microfiber cloth brightens my day when I have to do boring cleaning. Ah well, I'll just have to rebuild my stash. Anyway, I am so excited to start working on the garden again. I'm going to get the jet wash on the slabs, finish painting the fence. And in the left hand corner, you know where the wall kind of curves round? I don't know if you noticed that, but it's really hard to mow there. So I'm going to build a big circular or hexagonal sandpit for the boys. I'm going to start growing fruit plants again because this garden is in desperate need of life. And I want to get loads of bee boxes and insect hotels. We can get the paddling pool out when it's boiling. I'm going to get loads of fairy lights and lanterns and make it all magical. And me and Charlie can sit out in the evenings and have dinner outside. 
And yeah, if it turns out the way I'm imagining it will, it's going to be a lovely little garden. That's if it all goes to plan though, because I had planned for this exact same thing last year. And as you can see, we didn't manage it. But it's in better shape than it was last year. We've actually got grass, the fences are half painted, so that's progress. Last February, this entire lawn was just pure mud, not a blade of grass in sight. So I'm actually really happy with how much has withstood the winter and all of the rain. I don't know if you're managing to catch my face in these clips, but I am in absolute agony. Because whipping this strimmer around was a workout, and one that my arms were not prepared for. I have become so unfit this winter, and that's another thing that's changing this year. Honestly, I know it doesn't seem it with the last few videos I've put out, because my house has been a shambles. But since I started making these videos and putting myself out there, my life has completely transformed. And I just mean in terms of my belief in myself. I know I just put way too much grass seed down there, whatever. The more the merrier. But yeah, I know I have it in me now to stick to routines and I trust that I won't break promises to myself. If you knew the way I was before all of this or when I first started making videos, you'll know it's a big deal. I genuinely am the best version of me simply because I picked up a camera. And yeah, because of TikTok, I now know that when I set my mind to a task, I can achieve it and I won't stop until I do. So when it comes to the garden, just watch this space. And we're pretty much all done for today. As usual, I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next one. We're on to the final part of my getting on top of the house series. Starting with the stairs, which as usual are a disaster. The amount of times we clear these stairs and say this is the last time things get plonked on them. We tried a stair basket, but that actually ended up making things worse. Because when everything's stashed in a box, it doesn't feel like something that needs to be sorted right away. And then suddenly it's overflowing and it becomes a problem. Anyway, next job is the washing. The pile is this high because we don't have a tumble dryer. And even doing one load a day doesn't make a dent. I constantly have comments from people saying if you kept up with your washing and did a few loads a week, you wouldn't have this problem. We literally do one wash a day. And it can be incredibly frustrating to hear things like that because it just makes you think, where am I going wrong if people aren't having to deal with this amount of washing? Well, I do know the issue, to be fair, and I've spoken about it before. We have too many clothes. Speaking of frustrating things, this week has been rough in terms of hateful comments. When you put yourself out there on social media, especially making the content that I do, showing your messy house and all of that, you can expect a decent amount of hate and judgment. It just comes with the territory. But in just this week alone, I've had someone tell me my kids deserve a better mum than me. I've had people accuse me of staging these videos on multiple occasions this week because it couldn't possibly get this messy this often. I've even had people tell me that I stage messes in other people's houses that I go to clean in. I've been told more than once just from the size and appearance of my house that I need to get a job and stop relying on other people to pay my rent. Do have a job. Do pay rent. By the way, this is the remnants of last night's bath bomb. I needed a good old relaxing bath after all of the work in the garden the other day. And after I'd finished, was I yet cleaning the bath out? No, I got into my PJs and snuggled up with a movie. Some things can wait. But yeah, back to the comments. I have the usual, fat, ugly, stop talking so much. Why would anyone want to watch someone cleaning their house? You're wasting your creativity. Your partner's lazy, you're being taken for a mug. And what a sad, boring life you have. I genuinely love my life, by the way. On top of that, when you start to get a following, you can also start to get people in your daily life who you'd think would be supportive and happy for you, swapping videos and talking crap behind your back. It's all a lot. After almost two years on social media, you'd think I'd be immune to it all, and most of the time it is water off a duck's back. But I think it's easy to forget that even though we do know kind of what we're getting into when we put ourselves on social media, we're human too, and sometimes we have bad days and insecure days, and sometimes it can get to you. I also think that just because someone's brave enough to put themselves out there, it doesn't justify people being completely vile just because they feel they're safe behind a screen. So yeah, sometimes it gets to me, but then I think, do I enjoy making these videos? And the answer is 100%. Making them gives me a creative outlet. It's been instrumental as a person with executive dysfunction and someone who struggles with finding motivation in getting me up and motivated to clean. And I genuinely look forward to every video I make. The biggest thing is, though, 
I think they're helping a lot of other people too, and that means everything to me. So for that, I tolerate the hate, but I just wanted to have a little vent because it helps getting things off your chest, doesn't it? And I do recognise that the lovely, supportive, kind comments far outweigh the bad. And I couldn't be more appreciative of that. Anyway, we're finally on top of the house again, and now we can work on maintaining it. And I'll see you soon.